Hello and welcome to the DIY Investing YouTube channel. We're working through every company in S&P 500 and today is Boston Properties Inc, ticker BXP. Over the next few minutes, I'll discuss both the valuation of this company and my thoughts on its business quality. So this is an equity real estate investment trust or a REIT. They have a market cap of 16 billion and an enterprise value of 29 billion, which suggests they have about $13 billion in net debt. This is an extremely leveraged company. So it's the largest publicly held developer and owner of class A office space in the United States. It's in five markets, Boston, Los Angeles, New York, San Francisco, and Washington, DC. So very, very expensive markets, um, fully integrated real estate company. So this company, you can quickly see, has 20 straight years of profitability, which is a very positive sign for its performance and for its business quality. Anytime you have 20 straight years of profitability with no losses, that's a very, very good thing to see. However, one thing that I don't like is that these numbers are relatively low. You're at 5% return on invested capital in 2002. You do get up to 14% by 2007, but in 2008, you're at 1%, and that continues. You get to 2% in 2014 and 3% in 2020, but back to 2% in 2021. Basically, since 2008, you've had anywhere from 1% to 3% return on invested capital, which is absolutely terrible. With return on invested capital this low, you're a very low quality company because it means that the return on equity just can't be that high due to the low return on invested capital. Even if you have debt to leverage up the company, it's gonna be hard to get debt at such low rates. So like, if you have a return on invested capital of 2%, but debt of 3%, you're going to be destroying value. Even if you leverage up the company, it's going to be very hard to have an acceptable return on equity. And that's what we see when we go to the 10-year median returns. You have return on equity of 6.5%. And so you do get it leveraged up from the 2.5% return on invested capital, but it's still not a double-digit number. And you really want return on equity of 10% at a minimum before you invest in a company. And so this number is just extremely small. In addition to this, the, return, the valuation is very, very high. PE of 30 for a company with these numbers, price to book of 2.1 with a return on equity of 6.5% means your return on equity on an adjusted basis is like 3% because you got to divide it by this book value of 2.1. And so you're really just getting returns in the 2 to 3% range if you own this company over the long haul. It's very, very bleak. Yes, you're growing revenue at 5%. Yes, you're growing assets at 4.2%, which is why you've had some improvement in return on invested capital over the, the last 10 years. But it's not a lot. I mean, you take this number of, you know, you're getting 2 to 3% return, maybe growth of 5%. You're talking somewhere in the range of 3 to 8% annual returns if you own this company. And that's bleak. That The only way they're even able to grow this, and I can bet very highly, is by diluting shareholders over time. And that's probably what we're going to see is that they've been able to grow the actual earnings faster than they're growing earnings per share because of dilution. And we'll see if we can dive into the income statement next. Before we get there, don't forget to like this video if you're enjoying it so far. Please subscribe so you can get more great investing content as I dive into investing videos each and every week, whether it's individual companies or instructional videos on how to be a better investor. Now we go to the income statement. On the income statement, you can see they do have dilution, but it's not nearly as much as I thought. They've diluted from 150 million shares to 256 million shares outstanding over time. So the dilution isn't as bad there. They do show this profitability, but again, you pay a very high amount of net interest income. Look at this. So beginning in 2012, you're paying two thirds of your operating profit as interest income. You're paying that same 400 million is pretty constant. They've been able to use those low rates. So now you're only paying basically half or 40% of your operating profit as net income. So that's why they've been able to grow a little bit faster is their operating profits grown faster than their net interest income, which has been a huge beneficial element for them to continue this growth period. Uh, when we go to the balance sheet though, you're gonna clearly see that they have a lot of debt. So you have 8 billion debt at the beginning of the decade and 12.7 billion in debt at the end of the decade. And this com basically compares to their assets of 18 billion. Two thirds of their assets are covered by debt. Um, extremely leveraged company, and that's the only way this is working at all for them. The cash flow statement, you can clearly see again, they have this cash flow from operations. They're putting a lot of cash into growing, but they're also putting that cash um, 
Let's see. So they're having to issue debt again to continue that growth. They are paying dividends, but but really that's a misnomer because these dividends are higher in a lot of years than the cash flow from operations, especially when you say the dividends are higher than the cash flow from operations adjusted for the amount they have to reinvest in their business. So it's a little bit of a Ponzi like nature in that new debt is be, the debt is being used to pay the dividends. You have to keep taking on debt to pay the dividends because you can't pay dividends and invest in the business without taking on that debt. So they need that to grow and higher interest rates in particular are likely to really hurt this company. So for me, Boston Properties is an avoid. I would not put it in my watch list. I would not buy it. Um, and it's just not interesting to me at all because these return on invested capitals are way too low. I want to see this number around 10% and we're at 2%. So for me, avoid I avoid Boston Properties. If you enjoyed this video, please hit that like button. We are working through every company in the S&P 500 and the only way to get them all is to subscribe, ring that bell so you can get notifications as I upload new investing videos each and every week. Thank you for listening and until next time, stop paying fees, start building wealth.